Hello, and thank you for watching this regional forecast for the Corn Belt. I'm Andrew Pritchard, Senior Meteorologist with Nutrient Ag Solutions. So check out the satellite picture here. Early on Friday morning, the sun's still coming up over the eastern horizon. We've got clusters of showers and storms anywhere from the Oklahoma and Texas Panhandle through portions of Kansas on into the mid-Mississippi Valley, parts of northwest Missouri and eastern Iowa, seeing those clusters of storms early this morning. We can flip it over and look at the radar picture. And again, this is where we see the most shower and storm activity here early on this Friday morning. And again, much of that along a cold front here that's stretching from the northern plains, really from the Canadian prairie, through the uh, upper Midwest down into the central and southern plains. And we'll continue to see this frontal boundary slowly making its way from west to east, continuing to keep that shower and storm threat along it as we head into the weekend. So today, the severe weather threat greatest down to the south across portions of western Texas, the panhandle there into southwest Oklahoma, with a marginal risk extending into portions of southwest Kansas and southeastern Colorado. As we head into the day tomorrow, Saturday, we got a marginal risk across uh, a couple of areas here, first across the northern plains into portions of northern Nebraska, and then along that same frontal boundary from portions of southern Wisconsin down through the mid-Mississippi Valley, eastern Iowa, uh, parts of Illinois down through Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, and into Texas. And then on Monday, we kind of reload a severe weather threat once again across the central plains, portions of the uh, eastern Nebraska, southwest Iowa, Kansas and Missouri and then as we head into Tuesday not pictured here uh, this threat begins to shift off to the east into the mid Mississippi Valley parts of Illinois and Indiana Kentucky and Tennessee parts of uh, eastern Missouri likely going to be seeing that threat for some severe storms on Monday. Now as we look at the drought monitor we're starting to see not only drought expanding from parts of the, uh, the the high plains here into Oklahoma and Kansas, but starting to see some, some light drought areas popping up here across parts of the central and eastern Corn Belt. If we kind of overlay the soil moisture change here over the last three weeks, you know, June has got off to a dry start across a lot of areas. We saw uh, crystal ball make its way up from the Gulf here with a little corridor of moisture, but by and large, you take that out, we've got a lot of areas here that are seeing some uh, real dry weather here as we get into the peak uh, summer months here with the peak sunshine anyway. so. Uh, the drought monitor reflecting the highest drought here across parts of southwest uh, or southeast Colorado, southwest Kansas, the Panhandle region. But as you look at where we've been the driest or where we've seen the soil moisture change over the last three weeks, uh, really starting to hone in on this part of, uh, you know, eastern Kansas, eastern Oklahoma, getting into Nebraska and then a part uh, across parts of uh, the eastern Corn Belt here, parts of Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Kentucky and Tennessee, seeing a lot of drying over the last three weeks and so it's good news when we look at the next 10 days from both the european model here on the left the ensemble forecast here the gfs on the right both suggesting a uh, very active next 10 days across the midsection of the country across an area that we have seen some very dry weather over the last three weeks if we just overlay the national weather for national weather service forecast here for total precipitation accumulation over the next week Again, looking very active across the central U.S. Uh, with one to three inches of precipitation possible across a very large area and an area that badly needs it. One more way to look at this, the next week as a whole, the European Ensemble forecast, the probability of an inch or more of precipitation accumulating over the next seven days. And again, you see a near 100% probability here from parts of Oklahoma through Kansas, eastern Nebraska into Iowa, southeast Missouri. Uh, Minnesota, sorry, uh, and Wisconsin, uh, but decent probabilities across a big chunk of the Corn Belt, and again, in a lot of areas that really need some precipitation. The reason for that, well, we're seeing a change in the jet stream pattern, one that had featured a big ridge across the midsection of the country, allowing the warmth and the drier weather uh, to overspread across the region. This trough across the Pacific Northwest, or one that was across the Pacific Northwest several days ago, is continuing to migrate off to the east, and it's going to kind of set up here across parts of the uh, the Hudson Bay, Ontario, into the Great Lakes. And as it does so, we're gonna see an extended period of Northwest flow across the Corn Belt. And so, uh, you know, this is kind of the summer equivalent of Southwest flow across the central US, I guess, if you wanna see that, that we would see in the spring that leads to very active weather. Typically, if we're gonna see active weather here as we get into the summer months, of late June getting into July, it's gonna be the result of this Northwest flow where we just get enough jet stream flow across the region. This is gonna be, uh, you know, kind of uh, peppered with little short waves that move across the region, tapping into Gulf moisture. If we kind of flip it over and look at the precipitable water forecast here, you see flow coming off of the Gulf of Mexico. Each of these little short waves riding through that jet stream flow there is gonna be have the, have the uh, potential to kick off you know, clusters of showers and storms. And as we've gotten a little closer, we're even seeing the suggestion that maybe we see some legitimate upper level waves kicking off a couple areas of low pressure 
uh, that would move kind of from northwest to southeast across the Corn Belt here. And again, just tapping into that wide open Gulf moisture. Again, as we get into late June and July, the Gulf is not even quite as important as we really just kind of uh, move into a muggier time of year. But at any rate, this sets the stage for uh, what's you know generally kind of a, a tough pattern to pin down as far as specifics go, but one that's going to lead to several opportunities for rain across the region. So let's kind of break down the weekend with the high resolution NAM model. We'll go ahead and bring it back here to Friday morning, watching those clusters of storms across the central U.S. We'll see those kind of fade out as we head into the late morning hours, only to have them flare back up during the afternoon and evening. Again, the greatest threat for any strong storms is going to be across the southern plains, the central and southern plains here, parts of Kansas down into Oklahoma and Texas, but even to the north from there, across parts of uh, the, the mid and northern, um, or the mid and upper Mississippi Valley here, seeing the chance for those thunderstorm clusters as we head into the uh, afternoon and evening hours. As we head into the overnight, again, thunderstorms likely uh, in many areas beginning to fade out, likely or perhaps still ongoing in some areas, but then as we get into Saturday, we're gonna see the same thing, just shifted off to the east about 100 to 200 miles. As we get into Saturday afternoon and evening, then our corridor uh, with much of the thunderstorm activity is gonna be, again, just off to the east a bit, across parts of Missouri, Iowa, Illinois, and Wisconsin, uh, with another little short wave making its way across the Dakotas, kicking off some scattered storms across that region. So as we took, take a look at the uh, total precipitation between now and midday on Sunday, Again, the uh, the corridor is clear here, uh, but it's not going to be a widespread, you know, broad brushed. Everyone gets one to three inches of rain here over the next several days. It's going to be, a, you know, some fields picking up two to three inches where we get some of those heavier storms, especially across the Red River region here, across parts of Oklahoma. Uh, but again, even northward into the mid Mississippi Valley here, it's going to be a kind of a smattering of precipitation with these clusters of storms over the next several days. And as we take a look even deeper here, the European model just kind of keeps it going. Uh, this is really a pattern we're diving into the details days in advance is going to kind of bite me here as uh, it's going to be kind of a subtle pattern. Again, these um, a little short waves embedded within the flow. Uh, another thing we get here in the summer is we get, you know, outflow, that cool outflow from thunderstorm clusters the day before can continue on uh, off into the east uh, and then flare up with thunderstorms as we get into the peak heating of the following day. So uh, this is going to be kind of a now cast situation where we kind of get the details maybe a day or two in advance on where those thunderstorm clusters and the potential for severe weather is going to be highest. But uh, the overall pattern, I guess, is what I really want you to focus on. And that is a much more active pattern across the midsection of the country. But at any rate, we'll kind of take a look at what we've got now from the European model heading through the day today. Again, that greatest risk for heavy rain and thunderstorms is going to be across parts of Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, but scattered storms continuing off north and east from there. We'll head into the day on Saturday. Again, that severe weather threat and the threat for thunderstorms is going to be highest across parts of Iowa, Wisconsin, Illinois, into Missouri, uh, with a second little wave here across the Dakotas as we get into a Saturday afternoon and evening. We'll get into the day on Sunday. Uh, and then we're going to be kind of refocusing back toward the west again across parts of Nebraska and Iowa and Kansas for the best threat for maybe some severe weather and some heavy precipitation. Uh, but that frontal boundary that we're watching today and tomorrow continues. And we could see some scattered storms along that across parts of the Mid-South into Indiana and Ohio. Let's take this a little bit further. We then see, uh, as we I talked about exactly the same thing happening Sunday, we'll watch for those thunderstorms to flare up across this region. And then as we get into Monday, that shifts off to the east, about 100 to 200 miles. Monday, then we'll be looking for the greatest threat for storms, maybe a few severe across parts of Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, uh, and Missouri. And then we just kind of continue to reload. It looks like this may drag a frontal boundary off to the south on Tuesday, giving parts of the central and eastern Corn Belt a bit of a break. Uh, but this front kind of just lingers back across the central plains and we get another short wave. It's going to ride along that and kind of reinvigorate things across the midsection of the country for more showers and storms as we get into the later part of the week. So as we take a look at temperatures then, they do cool a bit across the midsection of the country, but that's likely or largely just due to the uh, the widespread showers and storms across the region each day. And as we're talking about, you know, several degrees cooler than average as we get into late June, that's not really all that cool. So what does that actually look like in terms of our high temperatures over the next several days? Well, today that warmth finally uh, has been making its way into the eastern Corn Belt, seeing those temperatures in the 80s and 90s during the afternoon on Friday. Cooler off to the west as we look at the high plains, highs only in the 70s. 
starting to crop and recover some as we get into Saturday. Again, warmest air going to be found in the eastern Corn Belt, cooler back to the west. And then as we get into the weekend and early next week, this is what we're talking about here. And you see the blue shading making its way in. This is Tuesday high temperatures, but we're still talking about upper 70s, low to mid 80s across the region. Uh, very seasonally uh, appropriate here for this time of year as we get into late June. So a much more active, slightly cooler pattern as we head into next week.